my little culture vultures. It's your homeboy, Quentin Chris Peckett, coming at you with another dope film review. Or at least that's what all the others say. Anyway, today we are looking at QT8, which is the documentary about my namesake, Quentin Tarantino, and his first eight films, starting with Reservoir Dogs and going through to The Hateful Eight. Interestingly, it doesn't feature any interviews with the man himself, but uh, lots of members of his production team and many of the recurring stars who appear in his films, such as Tim Roth, Michael Madsen and Samuel L. Jackson, sometimes referred to as The Gang. I'm a long-time admirer of QT. I remember leaving the cinema in the early 90s after watching Pulp Fiction and feeling absolutely blown away. This documentary is a veritable love letter to Quentin Tarantino, so I am clearly the target audience for this film. I felt a little worried for it early on, as at times it verges on the sycophantic. Uh, it's like a, a Hollywood backslapping competition with the interviewer pleading, please put me in your next film. Selected quotations include, there's Quentin and then there's everyone else. Some viewers just don't understand a Tarantino film the poetry and the elegance. Quentin, you turn unknowns into celebrities and then stars into legends. But there is lots of substance amongst the fluff. It charts his early video store days when he was sleeping on couches and selling his own scripts because no one would let him direct them himself. Then he made the decision to write a film that was almost solely set in the same room because it would cost next to nothing to shoot. That film was Reservoir Dogs. And Reservoir Dogs led to his overnight success story at Cannes Film Festival. The rest is history, which is charted in the film. There are some little QT nuggets thrown in there that I certainly didn't know about. Reservoir Dogs was partially funded by a fee Quentin Tarantino got for appearing in Golden Girls as an Elvis impersonator and the entire dog's cast provided their own wardrobes. Steve Buscemi is apparently wearing black jeans with his suit. The documentary works its way through the eight movies with a mixture of on-set exposés and tackling the weightier matters that have dogged QT throughout his career. The excessive violence, the portrayal of women, the use of the N-word. As you might expect, these arguments are explained away by the QT gang intelligently, but without much balance. Then come the major elephants in the room. Uma Thurman's stunt accident and injury, which Tarantino has accepted a lot of culpability for, and his long-term association with Harvey Weinstein. The latter is dealt with in a long sequence with Michael Madsen, where he explains the power that Harvey Weinstein had over the whole of Hollywood and the silence that that brought him. Thurman's accident, however, is dealt with by on-screen text. Maybe the gang didn't want to comment on that one. The doc is a pay to Tarantino, made for fans by fans, and the vast majority of the content will already be known to them. The QT universe of product placement and character family trees. He's had an exciting career and it's all interesting stuff, but it's a little too unbalanced for anything but the most ardent of fans. I give it a firm but unastounding three out of five. But you don't have to agree with me. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Okay, I must away.